So this is going to be a quick video about Omar Mateen's New York years. He lived in New York for five years and his Afghanistan connection. His father was an immigrant from Afghanistan during the 1980s and that's actually some pretty remarkable substantial years to have immigrated into the United States. Okay, so Omar Mateen, the Orlando shooter massacre person, or er, um, he was born, raised, educated, and employed in the United States in the 29 years that he existed on this planet. Omar Mateen, he was born Omar Mir Siddiqui. He wouldn't become Mateen until many years later he would go to the courthouse and add his father's surname. For some reason, he wasn't born Mateen. He was only born Omar Mir Siddiqui. And Mir Siddiqui, Mateen, is his father's name. So, Omar Mateen was born in New York Park, New York on November 16, 1986 to Mir Siddiqui Mateen and his wife, right? Uh, New York, uh, New Hyde Park, where he was born, is near Queens, New York. So, it's in New York City. Omar's father, Mir Siddiqui Mateen, was a Pashtun. Pashtun, P-A-S-H-T-U-N. That was a specific patriarchal Afghanistan tribal lineage, a Pashtun. He was a Pashtun who immigrated to America from Afghanistan in the 1980s, along with his wife and Omar's mother, which I'm not for sure who Omar's mother, uh, also Mir Siddiqui Mateen's wife, I don't know what her name is. It's interesting that Mir Siddiqui Mateen immigrated to America during the 1980s. Because during the 1980s, that's when Ronald Reagan authorized the CIA to give bin Laden and the Mujahideen weapons to fight against the Soviet Union during the Soviet Union war in Afghanistan from 1979 to 1989. Uh, Charlie Wilson's War, this is a movie starring Tom Hanks, talks about some of these issues. Uh, that movie, Charlie Wilson's War, is based on the story of U.S. Congressman Charlie Wilson and the CIA operative Gust Avrakotos, Gus Avrakotos, whose efforts led to Operation Cyclone. Operation Cyclone. So this isn't a declared war. We didn't get into Afghanistan to fight the Soviet Union ourselves. We were financed and we were given money. We were given weapons to the Mujahideen, to Ben... Laden. So Ronald Reagan gave Bin Laden his weapons. So Operation Cyclone was that the name of the operation where Bin Laden got his weapons from the United States government. The United States government gave the Mujahideen, also known as Al Qaeda, at least three billion dollars during the Soviet Afghan war in Operation Cyclone. Operation Cyclone was the largest one of the longest and most expensive covert CIA operations ever undertaken. Funding began with 20 to $30 million per year in 1980, and it rose to $630 million per year in 1987. Ronald Reagan gave Stinger missiles to bin Laden, which helped him to down Russian war planes. So we're financing the Mujahideen. We're giving bin Laden all the weapons that he needs. 20 to 30 million dollars for six years and then in 1987 he's getting 630 million dollars him and his whole crew so that's for five years Ronald Reagan also gives stinger missiles so he's getting 630 million dollars per year from the US government he's also getting stinger missiles and I want to say they said warships but I, I thought they were I don't know I guess I don't know what a stinger missile is but we also had, like, uh, I thought there was rocket launchers, too. So rocket launchers were taking down the warplanes and Stinger missiles. So I'm sure it wasn't. It could have just been Stinger missiles. I don't know. Uh, but specifically Stinger missiles and $630 million was be being given to bin Laden from the U.S. government. Funding continued after 1989, after the Soviet Union pulled out of Afghanistan. As uh, they pulled out of Afghanistan because their whole society collapsed, right? The collapse of the Soviet Union. So Afghanistan killed the Soviet Union empire. They overextended. They spent all this money on the Afghanistan war. And then eventually, internally, their society collapsed. And now it's just Russia today. There is no Soviet Union today. It's just Russia and then all the other countries 
uh, got to be independent. So funding continued after 1989 as the Mujahideen battled the forces of Muhammad Najibullah's PDPA during the civil war in Afghanistan from 1989 to 1992. So they're still getting money. So, I mean, $630 million is no joke. And they got that for several years, possibly all the way up to 1992. Uh, definitely for two or three years. Michael G. Vickers was the architect of Operation Cyclone, even though Charlie Wilson, because he was a U.S. congressman, gets most of the uh, credit or the attention for Operation Cyclone. Ronald Reagan's program assisted in ending the Soviets' occupation of Afghanistan. Mir Siddiqui Matin immigrated to America in the midst of that conflict, in the midst of the Soviet-Afghan war. And there are about 25,000 Afghan refugees who immigrated into America during the 1980s, and many times the refugees were CIA assets. This was a covert operation with the CIA. And they were CIA assets. They were able to get out of the country because they had information. They were able to help the U.S. government in some way, shape, or form. But that's not always the case. So until we actually have evidence that that is why he came over here, we cannot say specifically why Mir Siddiqui Martin, Omar's father, specifically came to America. So that remains unknown. So Omar Mateen's father, Mir Siddiqui Martin, could have been a CIA, CIA asset, which no doubt the false flag hoaxer will absolutely love. They'll say, see, I told you, it's all made up. It's all big illusion, right? None of that actually happened. Uh, after the U.S. government stopped financing the Mujahideen Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan, the Taliban fills the vacuum, and then eventually 9-11 happens. So 9-11 was blowback. We gave bin Laden his weapons, and then one, a whole bunch of reasons, but um, we made promises. He didn't like what we were doing, some of our policies. So uh, we stationed troops in Saudi Arabia, and we said we were going to pull them out. Uh, the Israel-Palestine conflict and some other reasons. Uh, bin Laden got pissed off at the West, at America, and then he was able to encourage you know, some of the members of his troop Somehow, I don't know if it was directly, they came out of Saudi Arabia. Um, but uh, the 9-11 hijackers, 15 of the 9-11 hijackers came out of Saudi Arabia. But they were Al-Qaeda. They came from the Mujahideen and, and the Al-Qaeda that bin Laden and the United States government had financed. So that's blowback. We give them weapons, and then later on we're going to fight them. The same thing, we'll see this with Iran and Iraq. We've given them weapons too. And right now, currently... We are arming Al-Qaeda and ISIS. We are giving the rebels in Syria who are ISIS and Al-Qaeda to fight against Assad. So when Donald Trump actually says that the uh, Barack Obama had something to do with the Orlando massacre because of his policies with finance and ISIS and Al-Qaeda, he's, he's making it sound like, Barack Obama ordered the attack on Orlando, which is bullshit, but the foreign policy is absolutely right. This is what we did, you know, with the Mujahideen. This is what we did with Iraq and Iran during the 80s. Uh, the idea was to give them weapons and then have them just kill each other. And so that's uh, to fight Assad. We're doing the same thing. We are arming Al-Qaeda and ISIS, the Al-Nusra Nur front, which is Al-Qaeda. So we're arming these, you know, is Islamic jihadist rebels to fight against Assad because we don't like Assad. We don't want Assad to be in power. And, um, and Assad did use chemical weapons against his own people. So, I mean, this shit's crazy. This is so nuts. It's like we don't learn a goddamn thing from history. We finance these rebels. We put the weapons in their hands. And we get what we want temporarily. But then in the long term, we'll see these weapons being used against us. Mir Siddiqui Matin, Omar's father, has voiced support for the Taliban. Omar lived his first five years in New York in 1991. Mir Siddiq, Mir Siddiqui Martin, the father, then moved his family to Port, Port St. Lucie in 1991. So the first five years of Omar's life, the shooter of the Orlando Massacre, was in New York. 
you know, he lived in New York first five years. I don't know how much influence you could say that New York actually had on his life. He probably barely remembers it. Uh, when he was five years old, he moves to Port St. Lucie. And that's where Omar Mateen had lived when he perpetuated the Orlando Massacre on June 12th, 2016. So he, he basically was, you know, born in New York, but raised in Port St. Lucie. He was raised, he's going to be educated and employed around Port St. Lucie. So Florida, if there's a state that you can give credit, if there is a state that uh, aided and abetted and harbored this domestic terrorist, it would be Florida. So it's a little bit of information about Omar's first five years and his father's Afghanistan connection. He personally wasn't an immigrant, so that's my last point. Donald Trump, he says that we need to ban all Muslims from coming into the country. That wouldn't have worked unless you're trying to say that all Muslims need to be deported. But that doesn't make any sense. That goes against the 14th Amendment, which says all you have to do is be born on this soil. Omar uh, Martin was born on this soil. He was born here. And so, therefore, you know, Donald Trump saying, I told you so, doesn't make any damn sense whatsoever. And, um, and yeah, eventually he changes it and says, well, what if we would have banned his father? Uh, maybe, I don't know. But that's, uh, you know, what if we weren't given bin Laden his weapons? What if 9-11 never happened? That would be, uh, it would be a better world today, wouldn't it? So, so yeah, John Masters, Pulaski County. Peace.